for our last lesson in module 12, we're going to look at 12.3, distance between two points. And for this lesson, you need to use graph paper for your notes. Our goal for this lesson is to show how to find the distance between any two points on a coordinate plane. And for this one, it's instead of going through and starting with some notes, it's better to just kind of explore how we can find the distance between two points. So let's go ahead and jump into our first example. So for our first example, we're, trying, we're told to find the length of line AB. Put the line symbol over AB. So we're trying to find the length of line AB. And so here at the top we have point A. And down here we have point B. And the coordinates of A, just to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see, are going to be negative 1, 4. And point B is going to be 2, comma negative 3. So we're trying to find the length of the line that passes from point A at negative 1 comma 4 to point B at 2 comma negative 3. So keep in mind that we're going over Pythagorean theorem and another thing to note is that all of the grid lines that are vertical are perpendicular to those grid lines that run horizontal. So there are hundreds of right angles when you look at a coordinate grid like this. And we should also know that we need a single right angle in a triangle to use Pythagorean Theorem. So what we can do is we can actually use our line as the hypotenuse and draw legs for the right triangle that overlap one horizontal grid line and one vertical grid line. So our right triangle would look like this. Drew in two legs. We have one leg here, another leg here, and I... I don't have a box in this corner to indicate that it's a right angle, but because these lines trace the grid lines of the graph paper, we know that this has to be a right angle, because that is the way graph paper is made, at right angles. So we know that if we trace the grid lines, that we'll end up with a right angle here. So if you want, you can go ahead and draw that box in the corner, but you don't need it. Because it's on graph paper, we know that this must be a right angle. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out the lengths of these legs. And to do that, we simply count the boxes or we can count the units that make up the length, uh, the lengths of the legs. So for this left side here, our leg is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units long. So over here I'm going to put a 7. And then at the bottom, I see that this length of line here is going to be 3 units long. So I can put a 3 there. Now I've got the lengths of both my legs. I can go to my Pythagorean Theorem. Again, being a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'll substitute in my values for the two legs. So I have 7 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. And having memorized the first 15 perfect squares back in Module 1, we know that 7 squared is going to be 49, plus 3 squared is going to be 9, is going to equal c squared. Next step is to combine like terms. We're going to add 49 plus 9 to give us 58 equals c squared. Square root both sides. And we get c is going to be equal to 7 and because we're dealing with a coordinate grid, it's going to be 7.6 units. And so the length of line AB, the length of this line right here, is going to have a length of 7.6 units. And again, we found that by finding the length of this leg is 7, this leg is 3, using Pythagorean Theorem. We found that the length of side C is going to be 7.6 units long. Let's take a look at one more problem like this one. For a second example, we're told to find the length of line CD, which we see right here, the coordinates of point C are at negative 5, 0, and the coordinates of point D are at 3, 6. So just like before, we're going to set this up as a right triangle. You can draw your right triangle like this if you want, or if you don't like that method, you can go like this and draw your right triangle that way. Of course, drawing your lines a little bit better than that. I'm going to draw my lines going this way. Now I know that this angle here must be a right angle. So using Pythagorean Theorem, again, a squared plus b squared 
equals c squared. I'm going to have to find the value of my legs, this segment here, and this segment here, and substitute those values in for a and b. So from point c, from point c over to this right angle, that has a length of 8 units. And from point D to the right angle, that has a length of 6 units. So I'm going to substitute those lengths, those values in for A and B, giving me 8 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared. Again, going back to module 1, having our first 15 perfect squares memorized, 8 squared gives us 64 plus 6 squared gives us 36, which again equals C squared. We should be able to do this without a calculator. 64 plus 36 gives us 100 equals C squared. And now we're asking ourselves what number can we multiply by itself to equal 100, meaning we square root both sides. And we know that C is going to have a value of 10. So our answer here is going to be 10 units. All right, so that's a little bit about how we can use Pythagorean theorem to find the distance on a coordinate grid. You can also use Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between um, locations on a map if you have lines of latitude and longitude. Uh, latitude we know are horizontal lines, longitude are lines going up and down, so we can use Pythagorean theorem in those types of situations as well. So I'm not going to post the whole map on my iPad, but I'm going to draw a diagram um, showing two locations on a, a map that we can then try and find the distance between. For our final example, example three, we're asked to find the distance from the house to the beach. So here we have at point H, we have the house. Over here at point B, we have the beach. So we want to figure out the distance between those two. So just like before, we're going to draw a line going from the house to the beach. So we're trying to find the distance of segment HB. So to do that, we're going to draw a right triangle. This segment here has a length of 3. This segment here has a length of 7. So we're going to have 3 squared plus 7 squared equals C squared, just like before, giving us 9 plus 49 equals C squared. So 58 equals C squared. And from our earlier example, we remember that C is going to be equal to 7.6 units. However, because this is represented, by each grid line represents a half mile, each unit is a half mile, we have to take 7.6, multiply it by a half. 7.6 multiplied by a half is the same thing as 7.6 divided by 2. So when we take 7.6 and divide it by 2, we're going to get 3.8 miles as the distance from point H to point B, the distance from the house to the beach. All right, so that's pretty much our lesson. Um, in my HRW, they may ask you about something called a distance formula, which is something that um, I am not too fond of, but we'll go ahead and I'll write that down for you so that you can have that in case there's any questions in my HRW. And the distance formula is derived from the Pythagorean theorem, and it's d, which is distance, is equal to the square root of x1 minus x2, close parenthesis squared, plus y1 minus y2, close parentheses squared. And in this formula, x1 comma y1 is one order pair, and then x2 comma y2 is the other order pair. So you would take these, take these values, x1 goes in here, x2 goes here, y1 goes here, and y2 goes here. You substitute the values from the order pairs into the formula, Subtract, square, add, and then square root. Okay, subtract, square, add, finally square root. But 
I'm not showing you any examples with that because I think it's silly when we can just draw the triangle on the coordinate grid and use Pythagorean theorem. All right, but it's your choice if you want to give this if you want to give this formula a try, you are free to do so. Um, but I think that it's easier just to write a, draw a right triangle on a coordinate grid and find the distance using Pythagorean theorem that way. All right. If you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and write them down, and we can discuss them next time in class. And so at this point, I'm hopeful that you are now able to show how to find the distance between two points on a coordinate grid. Again, any questions, write them down so we can go over them together in class.